Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a combination of text analysis, network visualization and AI to diversify your ideas, which can be really useful if you're thinking about a certain topic like I did here. I was thinking about sleep and then I got to stuck on the idea of sleep. So this approach, which I'm going to present to you today, allows me to look at the periphery of my ideas and to develop the concepts and notions which are relevant to my research, but that I didn't touch upon. And that diversifies my thinking process and allows me not to get stuck on one central idea. And I will be showing you how you can do that using the graph visualization of text, using some analytical tools as well that are used in natural language processing and using AI, GPT-4 and ChatGPT models to sort of help this process and bring the AI into the loop of thinking and to help you develop your discourse further. So keep watching if you're interested to learn how it works. First of all, you need to get your text into Infranodus. And in this case, um, I have a combination of my own notes and some research notes that I found on sleep. But you can also copy and paste any text or research paper, import results from Google, just copy and paste your notes, basically anything. And when I come back to this research, I see that it was about uh, actually quality of sleep, deep sleep, and I see that it's too focused on sleep. And the thematic diversity of this discourse is low. It's shown here in the an analytics panel and also here. So I, if, if I click on this button, I will see what this means. You know uh, that it's too focused on specific ideas, sleep in this case. It takes too much attention. And perhaps if I want to develop this discourse further, I want to go a little bit more into the peripheral ideas that relate to the main topic, but uh, that are underrepresented in this discourse. And graph visualization is a really great tool to do that. Um, if you don't know how this visualization works, I will explain it in a few details. So basically any text that you see um, is represented as a, as a graph where the concepts that are used in this text are the nodes and the co-occurrences of those concepts are the connections. So this enables us to build build a graph visualization of any text. And if certain terms like, for instance, here, deep sleep are used a lot in the same sentence, they will be connected and they will also be closer to each other on the graph and have the same color. For example, there are some other topics here like uh, restoration period, for instance, they used in a completely different context. That's why they're in a different cluster and at the periphery because they were only used in one statement, as you can see here on the left, right? So basically, this is like a very good way to um, understand a little bit the structure of your discourse and also how you're using the terms and how they're connected to one another. And of course, this graph representation allows you to reconnect your ideas in interesting ways. And I'm going to show you how I would do that. So if I see that thematic diversity is low and that I'm too focused on the idea of sleep, I'm going to naturally look at the peripheral ideas here and see what I can develop further. For instance, here I can go into the cardio aerobic rate exercise. So this was a cluster where it showed that there was a study that showed that if I reach a uh, cardio rate, I'm going to increase the quality of my sleep. It shows me here once I selected those nodes in which context it used and also have the link to that study. What I can do is I can feed these ideas to ChatGPT using the AI inside panel here to generate some content related to it. So here is just talking about cardio aerobic rate exercise. I will also ask it to take the context into account so that it also adds something about sleep and then generates uh, some ideas that would enable me to develop this cluster a little bit further because at the moment it's a little bit underdeveloped. I just mentioned that it's good for sleep, but let's see what else it can come up with. So this is how I would use the graph to focus on those ideas, select them and then generate uh, some insights. So here it says that aerobic exercises um, at 60-80% of your heart rate can improve sleep quality by reducing body stress and increasing serotonin levels, which, which play a major role in regulating mood, energy and deep sleep stages. This exercise routine also strengthens the body recovery process during restorative period. Okay, so maybe what I can do now, and uh, this is what I would also advise you to do when you perform this sort of research, is that let's reduce everything uh, about sleep and just say, 
just talk about restorative period. So aerobic exercises, 60% of your heart rate can improve uh, rest and strengthen the body recovery process during restorative period. I'm going to add this into the graph and it will be highlighted here. So as you can see, I'm touching upon the underdeveloped topics and I'm developing them further. I'm talking about restorative periods. So maybe I can even go here and choose restorative body period recovery and then use the same approach to develop this discourse further. All right, so I can just select it once again and then take the don't take the context into account because now I don't want to talk about sleep. I just wanted to talk about restorative periods of the body and then uh, use GPT-4 to generate some content in relation to that. Okay, so let's see what it, what it comes up with. And this is how I would kind of stimulate myself to think in a certain direction. Here it's talking about restorative body practices, promoting efficient period recovery by allowing balance in the natural cycle and rejuvenation. Okay, can be interesting. Then enhance period recovery by promoting balance rejuvenation during the menstrual cycle. So also how it can be good for women's health, for, for female health. Uh, for physical and mental well-being. So I can actually add this one here and kind of develop this further. And as you can see, thematic diversity now shifted to optimal because right now I have sleep, but I also have quite a lot about body recovery process. So instead of focusing all my attention on this idea of sleep, which is still quite important in the graph, I have another cluster here, which was developed, which is talking about strengthening body recovery. So this is like an interesting way to develop those ideas. And of course I have other clusters like this one here on exercise and serotonin. So I can even select exercise, serotonin, uh, stimulation, emotional. So all the terms that I find interesting and then use the AI to generate some content in relation to this, add it into the graph and add more ideas that would relate to those underrepresented clusters here. So this would be one way. Another way that I like to use it is to ask uh, the AI to ask a research question in relation to those topics. So I have to think for myself rather than using the AI to do that. So how does exercise induced serotonin stimulation affect emotional well-being? Okay, that's a great question. I can make a research on this. I can also, in fact, send the same question to ChatGPT and ask it to answer me and provide some interesting advice. If I want something with more references, I could also actually use a built-in module. Um, so for example, here it's talking about emotional well-being and decreasing stress and anxiety. I know it's true, but I have to check it, so I'm going to save it into notes first. Here I have save to notes field, where I can save some interesting ideas into my project notes so they don't get added into the graph. And I can also change the module. Uh, make sure those topics are selected again and then Google them. And maybe there will be some interesting results here that I can use with links. So, so here's a study uh, on associative stimulation and how serotonin regulates mood, emotion and so on. And also some studies on dopamine and serotonin. So I can go further into those clusters. And as you can see, gradually I can develop those ideas further. So for example, if I see something I like, let's say, if GPT-4 generated something that um, I find is relevant to this particular subject, I would then add it into the graph and develop it further. So I'm just going to save it here. And as you can see, it's making my graph even more diverse by developing this other cluster on exercise and sleep. And if at some point I want to generate names for all these clusters that I have, I can click on AI generate high level ideas, and then it will provide me the names for those clusters, which is a great way of having an overview of uh, what this is about. So now my whole discourse is about sleep quality, like it was at the beginning, but also about exercise benefits, rejuvenation or restoration process, and social stress. And this is a great thing here that through this, I can see that, okay, I've also been talking about social life and maybe how this can be developed. So I can click a little bit more here, social, stress, and experimental. Maybe let's see what ha what is here. And we're, we're seeing some research on social defeat stress that exists in experimental animals 
and how it increases REM sleep. So when we experience stress, uh, REM sleep is increased. And this is great because actually I can select all those terms, also an REM. And then I can ask GPT-4 or Google to generate some more content in this direction because I'm actually interested uh, in this connection between social stress and uh, sleep and how, in fact, in this case, it was uh, a study that found that social stress can, uh, can increase REM sleep. Here it says it's, it, it will decrease it, so it's a controversial subj uh, subject. Maybe, maybe there's quite a few studies in this direction. So that can be interesting for me to add it into notes and write that it can increase or decrease on REM sleep and I'm going to research it further later. But again, what we did now was to focus on this underdeveloped cluster and develop it further. So this is how it would work uh, on focusing on clusters. Try it out on infranodus.com and let me know in the comments or directly through our support portal if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, remember to subscribe so you can get informed about more videos as they go out. And thank you. Bye-bye.